Imagine you are living in a world where the US dollar is no longer the symbol of global exchange and countries and different economies are transacting using a different exchange standard. So it turns out that this reality might not be as far fetched as you thought. There's been a lot of buzz lately about the end of the US dollar's dominance. Countries like Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, the BRICS are banding together to create their own alternative to the global reserve currency of the US dollar. And right now, the global currency is still technically the US dollar. This whole movement is being called the de-dollarization of the world. And it's a pretty big deal in the financial world. Want to know why? Well, let's rewind a bit and understand how the US dollar became the go-to global currency in the first place. This will give us some insight into why these countries are now looking to ditch it. And a side note, if you want to fully dig in to what's going on right now with inflation and wars and money and crypto and, and all this chaos in the financial markets, you can get my Money and Crypto Mastermind course down below 100% free for a limited time. No gimmicks, just click the link, get the course. And if this video adds value to you, I ask you to do me a favor and smash that like. Hit subscribe with the notifications turned on. It really helps the channel reach more people. So thank you for your generosity. Now back to how the US dollar became a global currency. Back in 1944, the US held more than 50% of the world's gold reserves. For thousands of years, gold was the top choice for trade. What it meant was the US had more gold than any other country and more than most countries combined. Essentially, the dollar bills themselves weren't valuable on their own. They were just a symbol that represented a certain amount of gold stored in the bank. So a US dollar was like a promissory note for a specific amount of gold, except it was really light and easy to transport. So that made it valuable. There it is. It's beautiful. Take your hat off, boy. That's a dollar bill. Since gold was universally recognized as valuable, anyone with gold could trade anywhere in the world. And because the US held a massive chunk of the world's gold, people everywhere were willing to accept the US dollar. The dollar's value was tied directly to this huge gold reserve, making it a trusted currency globally. Hey, hey whoa, yeah. dollar, you're getting strong. Oh, oh, hey, what's up, bro? Check this out. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, this is where it gets even more interesting. Honey, get that hot cocoa and start sipping because we're spilling the tea, all right? Seeing that the US had more gold than over 50 countries combined, the US saw a golden opportunity, all pun intended, to seize it. They proposed a deal to the other countries. Instead of hunting for more gold, why not use the US dollar as a reserve currency? Since the US dollar was backed by gold, this offer meant that the other country's currencies would effectively be backed by the US dollar. It was an attractive proposition. The U.S. promised that if any country needed gold, they could exchange their U.S. dollars for gold. The system created a common thread. No matter the currency, be it Peruvian soles, Mexican pesos, the Swiss franc, everyone could trade using U.S. dollars. But you might wonder, how did the U.S. end up with so much gold in the first place? Well, for that, we got to go to the Gold Reserve Act. In 1934, just a decade before the dollar became the global standard, the U.S. passed the Global Reserve Act. This act required all gold and gold certificates held by the Federal Reserve to be transferred to the Treasury. It also stopped the Treasury and other financial institutions from redeeming dollar bills for gold. But there was more to it. The act also gave the U.S. President the power to set the dollar's gold value by proclamation. So right after the act was passed, President Franklin D. Roosevelt changed the price of gold from $20.67 an ounce to $35 an ounce. This significant price hike encouraged gold miners worldwide to dig up more gold and to sell it to the US. It also prompted many foreign countries to export their gold to the US. As a result, the Federal Reserve and the US Treasury, they gobbled up a massive amount of gold, much of which was stored at Fort Knox and other locations. This was a brilliant economic move. The surging gold reserves boosted the money supply, leading to lower interest rates, which in turn spurred investment in durable goods. It was gravy. Bretton Woods Agreement. With all that gold, the U.S. had a lot of power. And as mentioned earlier, the U.S. saw a golden opportunity to dominate on a global scale. At Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, delegates from 44 allied and associate countries arrived for the opening of the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. 
This led to the creation of what is known as the Bretton Woods Agreement. In 1944, during a summit held in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, representatives from 44 allied nations gathered together to address the shaky state of the world economy coming out of World War II and the issues plaguing currency exchanges. To be discussed are plans for the stabilization of world currencies. All agreements must be ratified by the governing bodies of the nations involved. The agreement reached by 730 delegates established a fixed currency exchange rate using the gold standard. Essentially, currencies were pegged to the US dollar, which was in turn pegged to gold. This created a stable and predictable system for international trade. The Bretton Woods Agreement also gave birth to two major institutions, the IMF or International Monetary Fund and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the IBRD, known now as the World Bank. That rolls a lot easier and it doesn't sound as intimidating, does it? These organizations were designed to oversee the international monetary system and provide financial assistance for countries in need. However, the U.S. could only maintain the system for so long. As the global economy evolved and other countries' economies grew, the pressure on the U.S. gold reserves increased. Eventually, the strain became too much, and this led to a significant change in the financial system. This brings us full circle to the present day, where we see countries like Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, looking for alternatives to the US dollar. The process of de-dollarization reflects their desire to reduce dependency on a single currency and create a much more diverse and resilient global economy. Collapse of the agreement. As I mentioned earlier, with the U.S. holding 50% of the world's gold reserves, the gold standard allowed 44 countries to back their currencies with the U.S. dollar, which in turn were backed by gold. Of $35 equal one ounce of gold, and if you held a dollar anywhere in the world, you could come to Fort Knox and basically say, give me the gold, which made it very easy for people around the world to hold the dollar. This meant that any country could easily convert their dollars to gold, but over time, the U.S. struggled to maintain this system. By the late 1960s, the gold standard was becoming a serious issue. By 1971, the situation had deteriorated so much that President Nixon announced that the ability to convert dollars to gold was being suspended temporarily. Nixon announced to the world that the gold window was closed. Uh, very dramatic and very, very fundamental for the de decades afterwards until now. This move was effectively the final nail in the coffin for the gold standard and the Bretton Woods Agreement. There were several attempts by financial leaders and governments to revive the system and maintain fixed currency exchange rates. However, by 1973, most major currencies had started to float relative to one another, and the entire system eventually collapsed. This shift meant that currencies were no longer backed by gold, but by fiat money. Essentially, money that isn't backed by a physical commodity, it's backed by the government. The dollar is now a fiat currency, meaning its value is based only on the people's faith in their government. The US dollar remained strong due to America's military and economic power, and many countries continued to trust it. But the dollar still needed some form of backing. Without the gold standard, the US had to find another way to support the dollar's value. This led to a series of new strategies and agreements, one of the most notable being the petrodollar system, where oil transactions worldwide were priced and traded in US dollars. This arrangement ensured continued demand for the dollar and helped maintain its dominance. Rise of the petrodollar! With crude oil priced and traded in US dollars, countries that import oil must pay in dollars and those that export the oil receive payments in dollars. This led to the rise of the petrodollar system, further cementing the US dollar's status as the world's reserve currency. But the petrodollar system didn't come about by accident. After President Nixon ended the gold standard in 71, to prevent a run on US gold reserves, the dollar faced a significant slump. There was a real fear that the international community would abandon the dollar, weakening its global influence. During this period, the Middle East's rich oil reserves attracted heightened interest. In 1961, the Organization for Petroleum Exporting Countries, or you probably heard of OPEC, it was formed by Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, Iran, 
in Venezuela, later joined by several other nations to protect their natural resources from foreign control. A key moment came during the 1973 oil crisis, triggered by political movements and conflicts. The US's support of Israel in the Yom Kippur War, that led Saudi Arabia to impose an oil embargo on the US. This crisis forced the US to pressure Israel into a peace deal and rethink its strategy regarding Middle Eastern oil control. In 1975, a pivotal agreement was reached. The U.S. and Saudi Arabia signed around two billion dollars worth of military contracts, effectively trading U.S. military protection for Saudi Arabia oil fields in exchange for pricing oil exclusively in dollars. I was in Saudi Arabia in May and we are bringing back hundreds of billions of dollars into the United States. Now Saudi Arabia also persuaded OPEC to price oil in dollars. By the end of 75, all OPEC nations had agreed to price their oil in dollars and reinvest their surplus petrodollars in U.S. government debt securities in exchange for similar military and economic protection from the U.S. This arrangement kept the dollar strong for decades, but also it's now facing challenges. The end of the U.S. dollar? Now there's a lot of clickbait on YouTube about that, and I'm not saying it's going to disappear overnight, okay? Here's the reality. In 2023, a few key developments have suggested that the petrodollar might not be as rock solid as it once was, hinting that the U.S. might need to step up its game to maintain its financial dominance. One of the biggest headlines was on March 29th, when Saudi Arabia announced it had become a dialogue partner with SCO or Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the world's largest regional political and defense group in terms of both scope and population. So now, even though 60% of the world's foreign exchange reserves are in US dollars, this share has been slowly shrinking. Plus, with the evolution of markets and new tech, like crypto, the dollar's market share in global payments isn't what it used to be. Here's an interesting twist. The dollar's value has been going up, hitting near its highest point in the last 20 years. So why are folks saying the dollar is on the decline? Well, it boils down to a few things. First, the amount of dollars held around the world is slowly decreasing, and we need those held to support our debt. Second, the US recently flexed its financial markets muscle reminding everyone how powerful the dollar can be when used as a political tool. Remember when Russia had its dollar reserves frozen and there was talk of using them to aid the Ukraine? That made a lot of countries nervous. I mean, isn't that crazy? How would we respond if the US dollar was all of a sudden used against us in a war? Because of these moves, we're seeing more countries teaming up to reduce their reliance on the US dollar, with Russia often stepping in to provide the necessary energy resources. This has been quietly happening for a while now. For instance, in 2000, the UN allowed Iraq to sell oil in euros instead of dollars. By 2007, Iran had completely stopped selling oil in dollars. Fast forward to 2014, Russia and China struck a deal to bypass the dollar altogether. Then Iran and China sealed a $400 billion dollar investment deal without involving the dollar. India and Japan, Russia and Iran, Iran and India, they've all made similar moves. And more recently, China and Saudi Arabia have been making headlines by teaming up to create a competitor to the petrodollar, which is now being called the Petro Yen. And let's not forget about the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, a hefty 31.5% of the world's GDP, and they're attracting more countries looking to join the club. All these shifts suggest we're seeing a big transformation in the global financial landscape right in front of our eyes. The US dollar's once unrivaled dominance might be facing some serious challenges in the years ahead. If you feel fear about this, you don't have to. Register for my Money and Crypto Mastermind course. It's 100% free for a limited time. Just there's no catches, there's no gimmicks. I pour everything I've learned in over a decade and a half of constantly studying this stuff for you so that you can go from confused and being screwed over to empowered in this shifting landscape. So go register right now. And if you're still watching this, fist bump me, all right? There's some love. Now, remember to grab the course. That's for free for a limited time. Smash that like, really do smash the like, subscribe with notifications turned on. It helps with this channel. And then watch, watch where, wherever the video is. And you know what? Mostly, you keep living your life to the fullest. I will see you on the next video. Peace.